U.S. PBL Baseball on this Thursday afternoon is brought to you by our proud game sponsor, Quality Financial. Hello and welcome, everybody. I'm Brendan Shabath. That's Aaron Gemmel. Aaron, we've got another great Thursday evening game today. It's two teams who have gathered a pretty historic matchup, the Unicorns and the Hoppers. These two teams have had a lot of fun facing against each other. It's It's been an interesting battle between the two. The Unicorns lead the season series this year 6-2 and two against the Hoppers, but in all eight games, the average run differential is just three runs. These have been close games. They've been exciting. There has been a lot of scoring, really great pitchers on the mound. We should be in store for another good matchup tonight. Yeah, like you said, this is one of the newer rivalry matchups. We talk about rivalries all the time, and we usually don't think of the Diamond Hoppers and Unicorns as one in this league, but it's quickly becoming one. As like you said, the Unicorns lead the series this season 6-2, to two, but it's the, it's so close. I think that it, it, it gets the Diamond Hoppers fired up. It gets them amped, and it makes them want to come out and play great baseball. And just like you said, the stats don't lie. It's a three three run margin differential. So word for a really good treat tonight. As long and along with that, we got a great pitching matchup as well. Yeah, Adam Riggleman on the mound for the Unicorns. For the Hoppers, it's Derek Eddington, two guys who have been pretty good lately. Let's talk about a, a theme that we're, we've seen develop in the U.S. PBL this season, and that's the ebbs and flows of baseball. It's been a roller coaster season for a lot of teams, a lot of different guys. They've had their ups and downs. The Unicorns have primarily been up, currently, currently sitting at 18-6 and six on the season, but at one point in the year they lost three games out of six, so they had a little bit, for, for their standards at least, a a, a downward trend, uh, but they're on the up and up now. You talked to Ryan Kotke before the game. That was one of I the did. things he talked about. His lineup has gone through that. He's had some guys that have been in slumps. The team in general has just kind of been in a slump lately. He feels like it's it's their time to kind of get it turned around. He's he said it's all about it's just all about getting the bats going at the right time. We're approaching August, and it was, we all know in the USPBL it's getting closer to the playoff time, championship baseball time, and just getting the bats right just. The wind, obviously, tonight is going to be a big factor in uh, trying to loft some hits and try to loft some balls out of the ballpark tonight. And what she, what she said, he hopes that uh, entertains the crowd here tonight. And just get everyone, everyone's had their uh, everyone's had their hot streaks. The Unicorns had their hot streak. The Beavers have had their hot streaks. The Mammoths have had their hot streaks. And this, all those teams have had their low points of this season, too. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the Hoppers are going to, one, do against the Unicorns here tonight, and two, just keep progressing in the month of, month of August as we approach it. We'll see how new additions to the Hoppers lineup can help maybe get them off the schneid and, and heat up those bats. <laughs> Christian Perez from the west side, Willie Mammoth, has been traded over to play second base for the Hoppers. He gets the start today, a guy who Ryan Cocky is excited about. Christian Perez, a former teammate of Hoppers third baseman, Yadi Rivera, back at Northwestern Ohio, back in college. Those two are reunited together. Kotke kind of thinks maybe that could be a good thing for Perez, who, who hasn't had the best start to his professional career with the Mammoths. Maybe a change of scenery is all he needs. No, yeah, that's what, right. That's what he said. And he's, you know, he, Kotke said he likes him, uh, he likes the potential that he has. Uh, he's been more vocal with his teammates. He's been coming, up, you know, more out of his shell, to say the least, um, which is always a good thing. You know, sometimes when you get traded, uh, traded from team to team, you know, it can really hinder whether you're going to be more vocal or more close with your teammates or not. And with Perez coming out as more vocal, that's a great sign for the Hoppers moving forward. And let's just see if he's going to contribute. So let's take a look at our pitching matchup. It's Adam Riggleman, as we mentioned, and Derek Eddington for the Hoppers. Riggleman for the Unicorns. We'll start with Riggleman and the visiting Unicorns. He's not a guy who jumps off the page to you. Not particularly no. tall, not particularly high velocity, but the one thing he does is he gets out. He doesn't put a lot of base runners on, doesn't walk a lot, has not given up a ton of hits this year. He just he just gets the job done, and, and in baseball, especially on the mound, that's kind of the main thing. No matter what you do, whether it's high velocity, low velocity, if you get batters out, you're going to stay out there, and he gets out there again tonight. And he's, consi and he's consistent at getting those outs, right? And that's the big, and that's the biggest thing. I, when I was last year, last time here, I was with you, Trevor Jackson. I remember, remember Trevor Jackson pitching. He was so consistent, and that's the same. And that's the same thing with every single one of these pitchers. As long as you develop a consistent go-to pitch, a sec, a, a number two pitch, or even a number three pitch to go to, as long as you can develop those in this league, and hopefully get that call from any of the or MLB organizations or any of the other independent ball clubs around the country. That's all that. That's all that matters, and that's what they're here for. 
And for Eddington, what does jump off the page to you is the 6'9 height and thus the velocity. That arm angle leads to, to a long whip action. He's got a good fastball. Yeah, 6'9", you're probably thinking more of a tight end in football or a power forward in center in basketball. But like you said, you got a long, he's got a long reach, which creates more velocity on that ball. And it's, def it's definitely something to pay a close, a close eye to when you're watching, watching him pitch. We thank you so much for joining us. If you're here at Jimmy John's Field watching the My Michigan TV pregame show, we hope you enjoy the rest of the evening on YouTube and Facebook and My Michigan TV on the stream. We'll be back after the break with starting lineups and first pitch. these business owners find the time for peace of mind because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Oldies Night at the Ballpark is brought to you by Quality Financial and our following proud sponsors. Belfour Property Restoration, Ascension, Budweiser, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy John's, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating and Cooling, Plumbing and Refrigeration, Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers, Pepsi, Scott's, and United Wholesale Mortgage. We thank all of our proud sponsors for everything that they do for the U.S. PBL. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game between the visiting Utica Unicorns and the home Eastside Diamond Hoppers. We'll start with the Unicorns batting first and leading off, playing center field is the lefty Drew Galassi. Malik Bolin at number two in the lineup, playing in left. Leandy Castro rounds out the outfield in right, batting third. Ari Sakopoulos, the only other lefty, batting cleanup and playing first base. Noah Childress, the designated hitter today for the Unicorns, batting fifth. Kevin Lambert in the hot corner over at third, batting sixth. Matt Parkinson, a late scratch for the Unicorns, so Jake Martin, Gets his third professional start, batting seventh behind the dish. Luis Attilis at short, batting eighth. And John Hodo, the double play combination up the middle, batting ninth. For the home east side Diamond Hoppers, it will be Alex Pup at short leading things off for them. Blake Porter, the lefty who hit a home run the last time against these unicorns and cranked a few in batting practice, bats second and plays center. Yadi Rivera plays at third and bats third. Joe Burke back over there at first, cleaning things up for the Hoppers. Nick Kreitzer, the designated hitter, batting fifth. Schellenbarger, another lefty, follows him, batting sixth and playing right. Christian Perez, as we mentioned, the new addition, gets the start at second base with his former infield teammate Yadi Rivera over there at third. Perez will bat seventh. Lawler in left will bat eighth. And Kevin Koziel starts, giving Whit Hughes a day off behind the dish, batting ninth. They're led by Derek Eddington on the mound. Brennan Shabath, Aaron Gemmel bringing you this call. Aaron, wind has been a, a hot topic of conversation at the USPBL throughout the season and how it affects fly balls into the outfield. I was just out there on the concourse minutes before we came live, and uh, it's windy. It, it is. It's a, it's, a very, it's a very windy evening here in downtown Utica. 
And we've said we've said this all year. It, uh, wind is such a huge factor when it comes to hit comes to hitting the ball. And it just it all depends on which direction the wind's going. If there's a crosswind, if there's if it's just blowing in a certain direction or not. It all depends for these hitters. Depends if they're right-handed or if they're left-handed. Uh, depends where where they end up, end up hitting the ball off the barrel too. So it's going to be an interesting night to see uh, how many homers are going to get cranked out of here tonight. As the lineup cards are being exchanged, there's a few new names for the Hoppers, along with Christian Perez. Also, Christian Fedco from the University of Connecticut has joined the Hoppers as a backup second baseman to Perez. We'll see if he can get an at-bat later in the game tonight. Expected to start in the double header that the Hoppers have on Saturday. Let's take a look at our pitchers, Riggleman and Eddington. We'll start with Derek Eddington, who we'll see here in the top of the first. Eddington struggled through his last time out. It was also against these unicorns. Both Eddington and Riggleman, their last start was against each other. Um, but Eddington, for him, it, it was a rough day. Five innings, nine hits, five runs, only three strikeouts in what was an 11-1 to one loss for the Hoppers, a long day. And here's the, th here's the thing. He's given up 10 runs on the year uh, as, as, a, you know, as a whole. And he has 20, Eddington has 26 strikeouts. 25 hits. His ERA is pretty sub, pretty pretty good to this point. 3.20. He's won. He's his win and win and loss records. One. He's one and two. He's appeared in seven games. So it'll be uh, interesting games. Let's see how he comes. See how he bounces back after a really rocky uh, outing last time. And you mentioned some of the totals for Eddington. Ten earned runs. 25 hits. Nine hits was the most he's given up a game in a game. And also the five earned runs was the career high for him so he's looking to have a better start today for Riggleman he had a very good outing against these diamond hoppers went five innings gave up just four hits only one earned run didn't walk anybody and struck out six that fastball was working for him something he's worked on lately trying to utilize that pitch more he did and it was successful it was it was it was successful and you look at his strikeout total it's 33 he's given up four, 14 earned runs he's pitched in 26 innings to this point 3.46 ERA so these pitchers are very si very similar in their terms of their strikeouts their their, e their ERA their hits and they're pretty close in how many how many innings they pitched as well so like I said in the pregame this is going to be an interesting pitching matchup tonight Lineups are being announced. The anthem is next. We'll step aside. We have your first pitch on the USPBL Network. Stick around. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. I'm all in with HR and Organizational Development Council. 
I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. I'm all in with Operations and Member Experience Council. I'm all in with CEO Council. I'm all in with Lending Council. I'm all in with CFO Council. I'm all in with Technology Council. Our, Our credit union is all in with the CUNA Councils. And we are ready for baseball here in historic downtown Utica. Jimmy John's Field, the site for today's game between the Hoppers and the Unicorns. First pitch moments away. Leading things off for the Unicorns will be Drew Galassi, followed by Bolin and Castro. Lefty, righty, righty for Eddington. 308 lefties are hitting against him this year. Righty's just 236. He's been really good against the right handers. The 6'9 native of Pickford, Michigan, making his third professional start, eighth appearance. Has only given up three walks this year. That's been the big thing for him. Is we talked about his struggles in his last start. It's more been the contact hitting that, that some of the opposing lineups has had, but he really just doesn't walk, guys. Three walks to 26 Ks so far. Yeah, that's that's an impressive stat line at this point, and especially for his third professional uh, start this evening. And let's just I'm I'm really I'm curious, Brandon, to see how many walks he'll give up tonight against a Unicorns team that's been known to get the bats going and they have been a power hitting team all year. So this should be a very interesting outing for him. The interesting thing about Eddington for me is that you know we talk about the pitch to contact and, and he, he's given up a number of hits and gave up a few a career high nine in the last time out against the unicorns but only one home run that's he's keeping the balls at least in the park it's soft contact for the most part not a lot of extra base hits that he's given up either yeah it's not like you know he's given up five home runs and his outings no it's just like you said it's just one home home run it, everything's keeping in it's inside it's keeping it inside the inside the park and you know just like you said softer con softer contact let's see if he can try and diminish the unicorns offensive attack here which we both know that they are going to be attacking tonight Wind blowing directly out into center field, kind of wavering between center and right center. Bodes well for the lefties. Six in the lineup tonight for the Hoppers, just two. But two dangerous hitters in Drew Galassi leading off and Ari Sakopoulos batting cleanup. 81 degrees here in downtown Utica. Sunset scheduled for 8.56, first pitch seconds away. It's in at 7.03, ball one, 90 mile an hour fastball outside to Golossi starts things off. For Eddington, just three pitches, four seam fastball. Right there, Golossi pops it foul out of play. The four-seamer along with a curveball and a splitter. Curveball is the main secondary pitch. Uses the splitter a fair amount, though. Which is always good to have in your arsenal, especially in a league like the USPPL, trying to get your name out there. Three straight fastballs. Glossy hits this one to left. Lawler's there right in front of the wall, and he'll grab it for out number one. A close call to start things off for Derek Eddington, but he gets the out. Yeah, we were just talking about the uh, soft contact, and that was almost a home run. It's just been his first, first batter of the game. But caught on the warning track there. Great great play out there in left field. And that br that brings up Bolin. Bolin's batted well lately. Up to 271 on the year. Three home runs to his name. First pitch, fastball inside. Gotta love those sunglasses that Bolin's wearing right now. Always has them on. Home plate completely covered in shade right now as that sun sets. The shadows will be more interesting. Bolin opposite field single on the right field line. Schellenberg has to chase it. Bolin's going to stretch this into two. 
He'll get to second base standing up and again, another hit for Eddington. A nice hit for Bolin. A double to start his day. And there and there goes the Unicorns with their with the attacking offense like like we like we were talking about before the first pitch. And Bolin had a, he had a great had a great rip down the uh, right field line there, got it all the way into the corner, and it got him on two and runner in scoring position, bring up Castro. Castro with six runners batted in this year. First pitch, that one's the curveball that misses. one -oh. Splitter this time up in the zone for a strike. That was a great looking pitch right there. Got it right where he wanted it to be. Eddington checks the runner. Works first base side. Castro pops this up to the right side. Burke ranges over and snags it for out number two. Eddington's only given up one hit, given up obviously one hit to this point. But quick, but already, two outs already in the top of the first. Now here's Sakopoulos. Trying desperately to get to double digit home runs. Nine on the year, 20 RBIs. Still looking for that 10th. 313 average for Ari. He's been outstanding all season long, but especially in the last few. First pitch swinging, fly ball left field. That's foul. Rivera's got to go a long way, but he'll put the squeeze on it for out number three. A, a double for Bolin, but Eddington gets out of it nicely. What a fly out and two pop outs. What a nice play right there. Get him, we get him out of the inning. Not exactly your typical up and down type of inning, but. But they're out of. But the Diamond Hoppers are out of there. So Eddington strands a runner. The Hopper is getting ready to bat here in the first. Chelsea Cooper with our sweetheart of the game. JJ delivering some flowers. I guess we can't find Chelsea. Chelsea over in section 107. So it'll start things off for the Hoppers. Pup, Porter, and Rivera. Before that, let's take a look at our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Facts. Here on this week's Thursday game, the creator of Tang also invented Pop Rocks and Cool Whip. Hmm, a Cool Whip. Yeah, it's just the Pop Rocks? That's interesting. Those, those two seem kind of opposite almost. Yeah, especially Pop Rocks and, uh, you know, candy and then something you put on pie. That's a little bit, little bit different, but all right. Whammo introduced the hula hoop in 1958, selling 25 million in its first four months of production. Who thought they would make that much money on a plastic circle? Well, especially in 1958, 25 million in their first four months. I think they would probably have sold out. That's that. a that's a big and, number, yeah. And I'm surprised that it's been it's only been around since 1958. You would think the hula hoop would have been around longer than that. TV dinners were introduced in 1953 by Swanson and contained turkey, stuffing, sweet potato, and peas. Sounds like a good dinner. Sounds like a good dinner. A lot of, lot of, uh, lot of options nowadays, right? Yeah. So, so many. Yep. Especially uh, would probably probably speak for both of us. Grew up on that kid, kid cuisine dinners. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Grew up on those, so TV Kraft dinners. Kraft mac and cheese. Absolutely. Pup, Porter, and Rivera will face that guy, Adam Riggleman. 26 innings of work on the year. Six appearances, all of them starts. Sub four ERA. Six walks to 33. Strikeouts opponents are hitting 255 against Riggleman. He struggled kind of opposite of Eddington, like we mentioned, a little bit with the long ball. In six appearances for Adam, four home runs. Leading off for the East Side, Diamond Hoppers, the shortstop, number three, Allen. This is a Hoppers lineup that has 
some home run hitters on it. Blake Porter hit one, as we mentioned last week. Yadi Rivera, Joe Burke, Nick Kreitzer, Bryant Schellenbarg are all guys who, at any given at bat, it feels like it wouldn't be a surprise to see him catch a good pitch. The first one to pup is under the zone for ball one. I was going to say, is that all who hit home, who've hit homers? Is that all? But, yeah, Alex Pup having a, having a solid year to this point, batting 240, homer, seven RBIs. It's this one right to Lambert for out number one. Hard hit off the bat of Pup. But Lambert's right there. Doesn't get any easier than that. Don't even have to move. One gone. Brings up Porter. Out in center today. Been one of the best, not just bats, but players in this entire Hoppers roster and league-wide, really. First pitch in there at the bottom of the zone for a strike one. Porter batting just below 300. 293, 424 slugging. Fouls that one off, falls behind 0-2. A couple home runs like we mentioned. Seven stolen bases, and defensively, he just swallows anything that's hit out in the center. Yeah, it's always inter it's inter it's always fun to watch Porter play, especially on the defensive end, because you look at him statistically offensively. Swing and a miss down on the curveball. Nasty pitch from Riggleman, his first strikeout. Yeah, you look at you look you say you look at Porter statistically on offense. It's fantastic, but unlike that pitch right there, come looking. Three pitches and out number two. That was the curveball for Riggleman. It's a four-seam slider, change-up curveball, and on 2% usage, a sinker. More of a developmental pitch for him. If he can get that pitch to be a bigger part of his arsenal, that'd be good for him. Rivera hits this one out to left. Bolin struggling, and that's going to drop in front of him. And Rivera gets on. Malik Bolin, a guy we've talked about, hasn't played in left field at all in his life until this season. The past couple games he started out there and evident there, just couldn't quite find that ball. Looked like he stumbled a little bit and he maybe lost it a little bit in the sun, which seems a little bit odd because the sun is setting to the west. So nonetheless, drops down, got a diamond hopper on first. Now here's Burke, first pitch swings at the curve ball. And for Bolin, over 20 games played this year. This is just his seventh start in left field, still getting used to it. Puts Rivera over there at first with two outs. Burke with that wide stance, the 0-1, low and away. Burke batting 207 on the year, five home runs, 15 RBIs, one of the best long ball hitters in the league. And a nice pitch there from Riggleman for strike two. Has a nice slugging percentage as well, .402. Has been in a bit of a slump lately. Ryan Kotke said he's absolutely not worried about Joe Burke. For him, it's just a matter of Working on approach a little bit as Riggleman will make a move back to first. Keep Rivera close with two outs. But for Burke, it's been a lot of conversations with Kotke and other people about his approach at the plate and just kind of seeing the ball a little bit better. He knows that for Burke, once he turns it around, he'll probably explode and go on a tear. 2-2 two -two now. Which would ultimately be the best time for him to do so, especially because we're coming up towards the end of the regular season here. So, yeah, that'd be fantastic if he if he would go off if he would go off and uh, start going on a tangent of his own. Playoffs in the U.S. PBL starting in September, so about a month left of regular season play. The two-two, another nasty curveball, and Adam Riggleman gets back-to-back -back strikeouts on outs two and three, both swinging to get out of the inning. Each team strands a runner. We're knotted at zero after one. I'm all in with Marketing and Business Development Council. 
I'm all in with operations and member experience council. I'm all in with CEO council. I'm all in with lending council. I'm all in with CFO council. I'm all in with technology council. Our, Our credit union is all in with the CUNA councils. They call me prospects since the day I was born as a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. Back here at the ballpark, Unicorns batting in inning number two. Still zeros apiece for both of these teams. One hit apiece in the first inning. The Hoppers may be a little bit lucky. Bolin lost the ball and left, and Rivera was able to reach that way. But Bolin also had a double in the first inning, but was stranded there. It'll be Childress, Lambert, and Martin, five, six, seven hitters to start things in the top of the second. Childress last time against the Hoppers. One for five. A strikeout and a run scored. Nothing more. First pitch splitter. 1-0. Oh. Childress batting 318 this year so far. Two homers, 12 RBIs. That one skips by Koziel outside again on the curveball. 2-0. Childress has been the designated hitter in almost every game this year. A bat that simply cannot come out of the lineup. One of the most potent and dangerous hitters league-wide. 2-0, big swing and a miss on an elevated fastball at 91. Well, you know they, you know they produce uh, big, big, base, big bats down there in Toledo, Ohio, where Childress is from. In on the hands, fouled off. Childress played his college days at Lourdes in the NAIA. Not as much pop as you would expect from a designated hitter, but he just gets on base and gets on base some more. 2-2, Two -two, swing and a miss. Eddington with his first strikeout, a nice fastball up in the zone at 91. I think Eddington's start, starting to find his groove a little bit. Gave up that, gave up that first hit, and first inning. Now, a couple, now a couple, couple strike, couple strikeouts, more consistency over the plate. I think he's trying to think he's finding his groove now as he uh, faces off against Lambert. <laughs> 